do 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 cookie smut hi my name is shauna aka cookie smut i make videos about baking and crafting if that sounds fun you should subscribe now and today we are doing another rug tufting video uh, so last week i unboxed my tufting gun which i had been waiting so many months to receive and i did my very first ever project um, a really cool cat skull wall hanging and though i love how the piece turned out i definitely realized i was making a ton of mistakes as i was doing it and y'all wanted to hear more about those beginner tufting mistakes so here we go here are 10 beginner tufting gun mistakes slash just tips in general um so let's get into it oh quick Side note, I'm not going to go over anything about materials, and I'm also not really going to talk about finishing a rug, like the gluing or the backing. This is just the actual tufting when you're using your gun against the fabric. Just that. Okay, let's go. Tip number one is, for the love of Buddha, please practice gun safety, okay? Now, this is not a real gun, right? It's not a firearm, but it is a power tool, you know? You've got um, this really hefty needle at the end that like goes in and out very aggressively. Uh, if you have a cut pile machine, there are some motorized scissors in here that are just snip, snip, snipping many times per second. Uh, not to mention there's this big old exposed gear, all right, that's just whizzing around. Um, very easy for your hair to get caught in there. Tie your hair back, that's bonus tip number one. Treat this thing with respect, treat it with care, because it is totally possible to hurt yourself otherwise. I'd say there are two main aspects to a tuft and gun safety. The first being only turn this thing on when you absolutely need to, when you're actually tufting, when you actually are applying the gun to the fabric. A really obvious time to turn your gun off is when you are threading it, you know, when your fingers are all near the business end of the tufting gun. Um, yeah, definitely have it off then. Also, any time that you might need to reach towards the front, turn the gun off. There was a tiny bit of yarn stuck in my scissors one time, and I went to try and get it out with my thumb, and I thought my finger was safely off the trigger, but it wasn't, and I kind of pinched my thumb. Thank goodness it was my meaty, meaty, strong thumb. If it was a less substantial finger, I think I would have done some like serious damage, so please, please be careful. Literally any time that you set this gun down, any time that you're not using it for more than like five seconds turn the thing off just turn it off like maybe keep your entire hand off I actually typically <laughs> keep my hand kind of like this I just hold the gun with my elbow I mean elbow my thumb pit <laughs> my thumb pit <laughs> Um, and that's kind of how I hold it all the time. You don't want to sneeze or get startled by your doorbell or trip over your cat and then accidentally squeeze when you don't mean to. It's scary. I've done it. It's scary. Don't do it. Tip number two is to be sure to flip your design, okay? Remember that as you are tufting, you are standing on the back side of your piece. The other side is the front side, so you have to make sure it's readable from the other side. On your side, it should be backwards. This is especially important if you're doing words or a logo. I know that every other How to Tuft video talks about this, but it's so important and it's so devastating if you get it wrong and you didn't realize until the end that it's worth mentioning again. Flip it. Okay, tips three and four kind of go together and together they address the number one most dreaded problem for beginner tufters, which is when the gun rips a hole in the fabric. Okay, in order to understand these tips, we have to cover a little bit about how tufting actually works. To demo this, this hand is gonna be the fabric and this hand is going to be the gun. So my index finger will be the needle, so the needle, and then my knuckles are going to be the bumper, okay? So, as you're tufting and I know what this kind of looks like and just be an adult about it, okay? So as you tuft, um, you stick the gun into the fabric and you push it all the way in to where the bumper is flush with the fabric. And then as you tuft, you need to keep the bumper and the fabric flush together. And that is gonna make sure that the needle is all the way in and that's gonna make sure that your yarn goes all the way in and your tufts or your loops, depending on if you have cut or loop pile, are all the correct length 
and they're all gonna actually stick inside the fabric. So tips three and four address how to make sure that that bumper stays super flush with the fabric. And the trick is that there needs to be pressure from bo both sides. So the fabric needs to be nice and taut and the gun needs to be pressed in very firmly in order for them to stay pressed together. Otherwise, if the fabric is a little bit slack or if the gun isn't being pressed all the way in, then the gun may actually bounce on the surface of the fabric and that is how holes or rips or shredding happens on the surface of your fabric. That means tip number three is to pull your fabric tight. After you put your fabric across your frame and pull it tight, pull it even tighter, okay? As Tim Eads from Tough the World says, the fabric needs to be drum tight. Now, I had watched his video about fabric tightening. I have read multiple forum posts about how to avoid getting holes in your fabric. And when I got my kit and I set it all up and I pulled my fabric across, I thought, I'm good to go. I know what the deal is. I know what the secret is. And then immediately, it wasn't tight enough. I was getting holes in my fabric. I was struggling for the entire first section of my rug with the needle of the gun shredding the fabric. And as soon as I tightened the fabric again, much better results. And that means tip number four is keep your gun firmly pressed into the fabric while tufting. Now for me, starting my lines was never an issue because I would put the gun all the way in before getting my finger near the trigger. Again, trigger safety. Um, for me, it would be near the end of my lines. I would kind of start to pull away, either out of like nervousness or excitement or just, I don't know, freaking out a little bit. Um, so it would be the end of my lines where I would get some of that tattered, shredded fabric from the gun bouncing against the fabric. And that would be also where some of the tufts didn't stay inside the fabric. Another note is that though you are pushing on the x-axis, you want to let the gun move freely on the Y and Z axes. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> you see, as the gun is tufting, as it's doing its thing, it kind of naturally wants to chug along in the direction of the bumpers. So uh, these bumpers, you know, as I'm holding the gun like this, they're pointed straight up. But as I guide the gun with my back hand, um, if I turn the gun, then it will start to chug along in that direction and then in that direction. I remember that the back hand is really only steering here, okay? You're not pushing it or pulling it in any direction. You're just turning it and it will chug along in that direction on its own. Um, now, I've heard of some people, I think out of nervousness, will kind of over grip the gun and try and like control it in every direction and that's gonna end up putting unnecessary stress on your fabric and like potentially on your hands too and not to mention you might end up sort of tufting too much in one area and if you're pushing it or pulling it you might I don't know skip a section let let it move on its own you're just the guide and this may sound really simple you know okay yeah just push it in this direction and don't push it in the other directions but I think it's kind of like you know patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time it takes a little getting used to um, it takes a little bit of time to build up that muscle memory so you know don't don't knock yourself if it sounds simple, but it is hard to do in real life. It, it takes a while. Tip number five is to stick to vertical lines only until your lines are coming out smooth and consistent. As we just talked about, applying the right amount of pressure against the fabric is already enough to think about for your first project. So when you begin, stick to just vertical lines. They're the easiest to do. Just stick to the vertical lines that you're used to. Now, there's a very good chance that your rug design doesn't consist of just vertical stripes, but don't worry, you can create any curved shape out of just vertical lines. You see, the nice thing about yarn is that it's floofy, technical term. <laughs> and so that means even if you're using straight lines to make a curved shape, Along that curved edge, the yarn on either side will kind of like expand against each other and you'll still get nice smooth curved lines even if you are using straight lines to color it in. The coloring in step of tufting is actually kind of forgiving in that sense. Tip number six is to start with really short bursts, especially on curved lines. When you start tufting, 
don't jump in the deep end. Don't go chasing curved tufts. There, there's a lot to think about. This is a brand new sensation. So start with those short vertical lines, and then when the entire line comes out smooth, where every tuft looks perfectly placed, then move on to longer vertical lines. Then when you're ready to add curve lines into the mix, start way back at the beginning and do the shortest possible curve lines. I'm talking like just two or three stitches and build from there. I've done three rugs now and I'm still definitely taking it very slowly around curves. I think it's one of those things where you have to get quite a few projects under your belt before it starts feeling super natural. Super natural. Tip number seven is tufting stamps. This is something that I don't think I've heard anyone talk about. Now, if you're a pretty coordinated person or if you're pretty athletic, a lot of what I'm about to say is probably gonna come pretty naturally to you, like it did for me. But you see, the thing is, this thing is decently heavy and you're about to go and move it all around a big piece of fabric for potentially several hours and it's gonna start to feel heavy. So anything that you can do to make this thing feel or seem lighter, you should do it. That means you should keep the heavy thing as close to your center of gravity as possible. I mean, hold it close, don't hold it out here like this. You're gonna get so tired so fast if you hold it out like this. I think a good rule of thumb is to have your back elbow stay in line with your body or even behind it. That means you're gonna be able to engage the larger muscles in your body, like your legs, your back, your butt. I go even further and I pin my elbow to the side of my body for extra stability. There's a reason why photographers hold their arms like this up against their body and not out like this. And that's because arms flail, okay? And chests, chests don't flail. Sometimes they shimmy, but no flailing. I also like to stay within like this height range, so like upper belly to the top of my shoulder. Um, this is my sweet spot for tufting. Uh, I think you have the best combination of control and strength here. I will hold the gun up closer to um, eye height. I just feel like I have more control up here for very detailed work. Um, but again, I'm holding it closer to my center of gravity and not like out either. Now, sticking to this height range is great, but most people's frames are bigger than this. <laughs> As you tuft areas higher or lower than the sweet spot, instead of moving the gun compared to your body, I recommend moving your body compared to the frame. That means that I recommend getting like a step ladder that's high enough so that you can reach the top of your frame without your gun extending past your eye line. And then you can use that step ladder or a stool or whatever to sit or kneel and reach lower parts of your frame. Now this also means that if you are building or buying a frame, I recommend the frame standing at least like two feet off of the ground. I saw this guy on TikTok where his frame went all the way down to the floor and in order to tuft at the bottom, he squatted down and like, I am just too old for that. Tip number eight is that you should clean up your work. This is something I learned from AJ Makes, but after you finish tufting, look at the other side and any places where you may have colored outside the lines, just pluck them out with tweezers or you, know, you can use your fingers too. But yeah, before you glue things down, there's definitely an opportunity to fix up any mistakes. Tufting is pretty forgiving like that. For any small mistakes, pluck them out and you're good to go, that's it. Any larger areas, after you pluck it out, you may have to go and like retuft. There's one thing to be cautious with retufting, but that's the next tip. But yeah, just clean up your lines, especially if your design has actual outlines. There's been some times where I've seen like cartoon character commissions where the outlines are just like a little bit sloppy and it just, it breaks my heart, okay? So do me a favor and get those nice, crisp, clean lines, okay? Tip number nine is to not overwork an area. This is mostly related to retufting. If you have previously tufted an area, but it is now empty, there's no yarn in it, either because like maybe you made a mistake and so you pulled it out, or maybe just for whatever reason the yarn didn't stick inside of the fabric, the needle of the gun is so hefty, it's so like thick, that it will have left a trail. 
okay? The needle has gone in and actually like pushed aside the weave of the fabric and now there's gaps. <laughs> As we now know, tufting is an activity best done when the fabric is pulled super, super tight, but now you've got this loosey goosiness from the previously tufted area. And on top of that, you might have little shredded bits that further weakens the fabric if, you know, you're still working on that pressure thing. So what I mean by don't overwork an area is don't retuft that place immediately. If you can, tuft in the surrounding areas first and then come back to it. You see, tufting in the surrounding areas is actually going to help push the fabric back and, and fill in that gap. Now you can also like use your finger and to try and like smooth it out, but another benefit to tufting around the area is that the more yarn you inject into the fabric, the more like stuff is being crammed in there, the tighter the fabric actually gets and the more strong and sturdy it gets as well. And the stronger your overall piece is, the higher the chance of success for retufting that area. This is actually something I learned a lot about from one of Curry Goat's videos. Um, it's actually one of his older videos about punch needle. I do not remember which one. Uh, there he really describes how the more you tuft a, a specific piece, the easier it actually becomes because everything is tighter and just holds together better. I realize now I actually have two more tips. Um, one of them I actually should have said a long time ago because I've kind of been going in order of like when during your project you'll reach these things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick that tip now and then I'm gonna throw I'm gonna chuck one of these bad boys at the end. It's like a bonus tip, okay? <laughs> Tip number 10 is do not cut your tufting fabric too small. Now hopefully it's obvious that your fabric should be at least the size of your frame in order to stretch across it, but you should also have at least two inches of overhang on all sides. And this is because we're going to be pulling that fabric so tight that where the fabric is being pulled against the nails, the fabric, the weave, is actually being pulled apart a little bit. And if you do not have enough extra fabric on the other side of those nails, then the edge of your fabric is gonna come undone. And not only will that mean the edge of your fabric is frayed, but it also means it's not gonna be tight anymore because there's nothing left to hold on to. As we now know, tight fabric is crucial to good tufting. You know, your frugal mind might be thinking, oh, if I cut as small a piece of fabric as possible, I'll be saving fabric, I'll be saving money, but no, 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 no. That is not the way, my dears. Ask me how I know. <laughs> uh, so yes, on my second project, actually, I luckily didn't make this um, mistake on my first uh, project, otherwise I may have quit before I even started. But on my second frame of fabric, I left about like a one inch overhang on one side and yeah, the edge of my fabric was just coming apart and coming apart and the more I tried to tighten it, um, the more it came apart. <laughs> so um, I was able to come up with like a stopgap solution, which is I found some duct tape and I taped, I like laid the tape down and then I pulled on the tape and fabric combo tight against the nails and then secured the edge down with tape and that did last me long enough to finish my project and have the tufting come out okay. I had a lot of the like holes in the fabric problem that I warned against in this video. So yeah, like tufting fabric, the nice stuff isn't the cheapest thing in the world, but um, a couple extra inches of tufting fabric is still so much cheaper than your time that's wasted if you tuft half a rug and then the fabric starts to literally come apart at the seams um, and you lose half of your rug. So just cut the fabric a little bit bigger, you'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so that is my 10 tips for beginner tufters. This is obviously not a like step-by-step -step tutorial of how to tuft. This is just stuff that I feel like 
I haven't seen covered as much on other videos or in other places, so I figured I'd let you guys know what I learned from my first few projects. And honestly, most of these things I'm still working on. Like, I still get the tattered stuff, I still get holes, so if that makes you feel any better about your first project, um, yeah, you're not alone, okay? <laughs> um, if you enjoyed these tips, please give the video a like please consider subscribing. Next week, I probably won't have a tufting video. I'll probably do a baking project, um, but I hope you stick around for those too. Um, even if you came here for the tufting and didn't come here for the baking, I do hope you check it out. It's all like aesthetically and thematically similar. Um, I do a lot of witchy stuff. If anything I said in this video helped you decide to pick up tufting and to give it a try, um, I do have a coupon code that you can use at tuftinggun.com, aka Tuft the World. Um, it's cookie15 for 15% 15 off your entire purchase, um, and I'll put a link down below as well. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Hey friends, thanks for watching. Do all the things, and see you next time. Okay, yeah, and my bonus tip is a real simple one, and it is after you finish tufting, after you've glued everything and it's dried and you're ready to cut it out, um, just remember to cut out from the bottom up and not from the top down, because if you cut out from the top down, then all of a sudden you have to like hold the top while you're still cutting, and that, my friends, is not the look. I know it sounds super simple, and if you just stopped to think about it, it's obviously common sense, but... If you're like me, after you've finished and you're ready to cut it out, you're so excited that you're not thinking straight, and then all of a sudden you have to hold up a rug while cutting it out. So yeah, bottoms up. <laughs> all right, bye.